I'm going to be doing a quick lesson on 8-3, teaching a trigonometric ratios. I need you to get out your notebooks, get a blank page out right now, copy this that's on the board. Um, if someone could hit pause on this video for a moment, so this way you can you know, copy this, that'd be cool. Okay, let's move on. So look, when you look at this trig ratios, you're dealing with here's an angle in a corner, and I need you to identify what ratio relates to that angle. So if you say sine, that's not sin, sine of that angle, that's a theta, is you the side that's opposite that angle going across, you call that the opposite side. And this side here that's alongside this angle is adjacent, it's next to it. And then the side that's the longest, that's opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. So going back to sine, sine is the ratio of opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be the ratio of the side that's adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is really sine over cosine. It's, um, you know, it's, it's opposite over adjacent. Some of you some of you might find this mnemonic easier to work with, that if you look at the first letters here, S-O-H and C-A-H and T-O-A, so Katoa. And this way you can remember that sine is opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. If you guys need to hit pause to be able to copy this down, now's the time to hit pause. Okay, so if we look at this um, figure, when we get to chapter 8-5, we, we're going to label a variable for the length of each side by writing a lowercase version of, of the letter that's opposite the vertex. So see, look, here's a capital B, go across that side is lowercase b. Capital A, followed across, that's a lowercase a. Capital C, lowercase c. So if we go to write a, a, a ratio for sine of b, so if this is the angle that we're interested in, sine of b, then the ratio sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the side that's opposite is the b, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle, it's a C. Cosine of B, well, there's the angle B, okay, so then the side that's, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent is A, and the hypotenuse is still C. Tangent of this angle is going to be opposite over the adjacent, so it's B over A. Okay, and same story again, guys. If you have to, you know, hit pause for everybody to write this down, that's good. Let me keep going. Okay, so, yeah, that, that's color-coded there. Let's leave that, you know, you guys can pause and look at that color-coded. Okay, um, for angle A, you're going to notice the ratios, the, the, the ratios change. The side that's opposite A is obviously a lowercase a, and the hypotenuse is still a c. For cosine of a, the adjacent side is b, and the opposite is c. And the tangent of a is opposite over adjacent, a and b. I think the next one's color-coded. Co yeah, OK. And again, if you need to hit pause to copy notes, fine. OK, if you know that this angle is 29 degrees, And I know that this is not on your paper directly, you know, on your worksheet. You need to write this down on a big piece of paper. Use this as a reference. Okay, so sine of 29 degrees is opposite over the hypotenuse. So it's opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, when you go to solve one of these, you punch this into a calculator or look it up on a, on a big uh, sheet of trigonometric ratios, which I am 
I'll give to you later. But you're going to get a numeric value for this, you're going to get a numeric value for this, and so these two equations really only have one unknown. So these are the two that you're going to use. This is a mess because you've got two variables that are unknown, so you're going to reject that one. So let's see. So there's your ratios, color-coded, and I think I've got values here. Now, when you go when you go to look up sine of 29 degrees, cosine of 29 degrees, you're going to need a calculator to do that. And when you take the park, you're going to be using a, a TI-84. The problem is, is that a TI-84 calculator on the park, or if you have the actual device in front of you, is going to by default be in radian mode. And then if you go to do these trig problems using degrees, you're going to get the wrong answers, even though you know what you're doing. So the calculator must be set into degree mode. So you hit the mode button on the calculator, this screen comes up, and then you hit this arrow button down until you get to radians, and then you hit this arrow button over here to, to, you know, to get to degrees, and then you hit enter, and then you will be in this mode. It'll be highlighted in that mode. And when you're done with that, you hit second and quit, these two buttons and it'll get you out of that mode or just plain hit second and on to turn the thing off and turn it back on again but anyway let's go so um, okay I've got the solutions already here so let's just slide this out of the way let's just talk about it so look if this is 29 degrees here and we want to solve for X that's gonna be sine of 29 degrees so you're gonna say sine of 29 degrees is equal to X over 13 and when you punch sine of 29 degrees into a calculator, it's going to look just like this and give you that big decimal mess. And so now it's an approximation. It's not an exact answer. And you say x over 13 is equal to that mess. And then in order to solve this, you, divide, you multiply both sides by 13 to cancel out the, the 13s. And then you're going to have x is approximately that value. Well, when I ask for this on a test, I'm going to want either all of those decimals or at least go out to four. Okay? I, I, I will, I'm indifferent about how many decimals you put up there. I certainly don't want only one decimal point because with rounding, you could very well get the right answer and still do the math wrong. So I want at least four decimals on a test. Okay, now solving for y, you've got cosine of 29 degrees is y over 13 because it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then if you punch cosine of 29 degrees into your calculator, you will get that decimal value. So that decimal value is approximately y over 13. You multiply both sides by 13 to cancel that out. And so then you get y is approximately that value. You can hit pause for other people to finish copying this. Okay, so now this one. Uh, let's see, keep going. Okay, so for problem number one on your test, if you go to write these ratios, sine of 44 is going to be, I don't know, over 22. Well, that doesn't get you anywhere. Cosine is going to be t over 22. And tan is going to be, I don't know, over t. So this is of no value, that's of no value. This is the one we want. So Okay, so then, there. If you punch into a calculator or look it up on a table, 44 degrees, followed across, cosine, this is the value right there, 0.7193 roughly. If you say that cosine of 44 is equal to 0.7193, you know, approximately equal to t over 22, multiply by 22, so this way you can get rid of that, you know, get rid of that 22. t is going to be equal to whatever that answer is. Now, if I give you a table to look this up and you use four de you know, decimal points, you're going to get this answer over here. If you use all the decimals that show up on your calculator, you're going to get that answer over here. Don't worry about it when you take a test. I'm going to write both of these down on my answer key so this way I know what to look for when I grade your papers. So don't sweat that. Okay, hit pause for people who need the copy.
Okay, this one. Okay, so for sine of 46, so if this is if this is the angle we're paying attention to, so that's going to be t over the hypotenuse, which you don't know. Cosine of 46 is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which you don't know. Tangent is going to be opposite over the adjacent. So this is the one you're going to select. We just need a decimal value for this tan of 46 degrees to make it happen. So I looked it up on the calculator and I got it on the sheet here. And so what I did is I wrote the same thing, tan of 46 is equal to t, you know, the opposite over the adjacent. And then I put in the value, uh, an approximation value for tan of 46 degrees. And then, you know, you multiply both sides by 10.5 to cancel that out. So you get t is approximately that value. And then just to make it, you know, good for those of you in the classroom who have a calculator, I put both, I, I put the solution here where if you're using all those decimals for 10 to 46 degrees, then you've got a number that makes sense. Hit, once again, if, hit pause if necessary. Okay, this one. On E, I, I have this exercise that I want you to look at and think in terms of, you know, using angle E and what's the ratio for sine? Well, it's opposite y over the hypotenuse 8. Cosine would be adjacent x over 8 over the hypotenuse. And tan is opposite over adjacent. So we're good. If you, if you go to d, well, then now the opposite is now going to be the x value. So, you know, the, the ratios change depending upon what angle you're using. If you want to say angle D, you know that all these angles add up to 180. So therefore, if you subtract 20 and 90 from 180, this missing angle is going to be 70. So if you punch, you know, this, this is going to work. You know, D, sine of 70 degrees is equal to X over 8. Uh, uh, you know, copy all of this down and, as I said, you know, pause it, move on when it's, when it's helpful. Okay, um, well that was me solving it. I, I worked with the idea of angle E and the 20 degrees, so I got sine of 20 um, is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse, and then, you know, I did the math, and then cosine to find out the value of x, because they asked or find the missing lengths, so I assigned two variables for the two missing lengths. So sine of 20 degrees is, is x over 8, and I did the math. And once again, pause it, you know, um, move on when everybody's ready and okay this one number four I wrote out all the ratios for the y's I didn't bother for the z's um, I guess but anyway so for y this angle here this 60 degrees then that's going to be opposite over the hypotenuse for sine so you're not going to pick this one because it's two variables you could pick these two look one variable one variable so cosine is going to be, you know, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so it's 5 over x. And then, you know, tan is going to be opposite is the y over 5, the adjacent. So these are the two you're using. Now I set those up and did the math for that. Now, the one on the right, the tan, is going to be the easy one because the variable is in the top. All you're going to do is set, up, set that up. You know, put the, put the decimal value in there in place for this, the, t uh, the tan of 60. And then you're going to say y over 5, and then you got to multiply both sides by 5. And then I didn't put the final answer, did I? Okay, let me pause this for a second. Okay, I've resumed it. Um, so let's clear it. So if I say tan of 60, okay, and I multiply both sides by 5, then I get roughly 8.66. So let me write that. 8.66. Well, I lost the rest of it. Uh, yeah, it's 8.66. Okay, and then, um, well, this side, cosine, see, cosine of 60, that's your y over here, um, is going to be, whoops, oh, that was me doing a comparison of special right triangles. Um, let's go back to the original image. Shrink that down. Okay, so that look, if we're looking at angle Z, Y, sorry, Y, 
So we're looking at the 60 degrees. So cosine y is going to be um, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So they want you to find the hypotenuse. Okay. So then, well, there's the setup. So you got the adjacent over the hypotenuse. You got the cosine of 60. If you look on the table, cosine of 60 is a half. And then, you know, so then you solve it. So then to solve it, we're going to need to uh, multiply both sides by x to make that x no longer be in the denominator. So 5 is going to be equal to 1 half x. Then you divide both sides by 0.5. And then some kids have difficulty understanding that if you divide by a fraction that's between 0 and 1, it's really multiplication. You're going to make a bigger number. So the 5 is really multiplied by 2 when you divide by a half. So you're going to get x is 10. Look at the ratio when you're done, though, compared to a special right triangle from when we were doing the previous lesson. If this is 60 degrees, and if this side is 5, isn't this side double? It's 10. Isn't that what just happened here? This side is going to be 5 radical 3. I guarantee you, if you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get this answer right here that we got there. That's it. I'm going to try to be back in class as fast as I can. Thank you for being patient watching this.